Baron. <laughs> Baron. Hello. How are you? I just got a phone call saying you never showed up to the bake sale with the peach cobblers. It's preposterous. Who would create such a vicious lie? <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> Baron, don't tell me you ate all 17 of them. Those peach cobblers were for charity. This is as much your fault as it is mine. What? You make that peach cobbler too damn good. <laughs> I mean, putting 17 hot steaming cobblers in a car with the Baron, well, it's kind of like putting a baby gazelle in a cage with a tiger. I was up all night making those. You really don't think of anyone but yourself, do you? <sighs> Look, why don't we go back to my place, put on the DeBarge acoustic album, and I'll help you remake the cobblers. No. You're not hearing me. The bake sale ended two hours ago. And so did we. Have you lost your mind? No. But somewhere along the way, you lost your soul. Come back to me when you find it. Chantel was a great woman, and an even better baker. If I was to get her back in my life, I'd have to change my evil ways. But how? Her words kept ringing in my head. Somewhere along the way, you lost your soul. I was used to feeding my stomach, but how could a man feed his soul? Then it all came together. Soul food. Soul food is a magical cuisine deeply rooted in the African-American culture and consciousness. Much like one of the Baron's other favorite foods, Gucci Fritos, the creation of soul food came mainly from necessity. When first arriving in the U.S., Africans were faced with unimaginable adversity, and to survive, had to use vegetables and parts of the animal that were oftentimes overlooked. Elements such as pig's feet, chicken gizzards, cow tongue, stomach, jowls, and small intestines were transformed from undesirable to delicious with clever cooking techniques and powerful seasonings. Over the years, Native American dishes such as cornbread and hominy grits also became soul food staples. In the late 1800s, these classic recipes intermingled with those of Irish and German immigrants to make the larger category of Southern cuisine. Utilization is one of the defining characteristics of soul food. Nothing goes to waste. Even the water that is used to cook collard greens goes on to become a liquid known as pot liquor, a vitamin-rich broth that is often served hot with cornbread. But if you live life like the Baron, a pilot martini works just as well. When walking into Brzezette's Soul Food at 1145 Bronx River Avenue, owner and head chef Rose could tell I was a man at odds with the world. You look like you need some soul food. Like an ambrosial angel of mercy, she quickly bestowed upon me her toothsome totems with a gentle, saintly hand. Hey, you got some chitlins, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, big fish. Cornbread, oh, homemade lemonade. With each passing bite, I felt a deeper sense of joy and empathy. For the first time in my life, my cold heart became warm with love and understanding. If I'd been watching Titanic, I probably would have wept like a child. However, the true revelation revealed itself as I bit into the boldly flavored chitlins. It all became clear. I realized I'd lived my life as a selfish slob only seeking out my own banal satisfaction. I wanted to change. I wanted to change the world, but how? I would spread the word of the Chitlin Rapture. I would become a missionary of flavor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bend your ear if I could just for a moment. Now, when I walked in that door about a half hour ago, nobody paid me much mind. And I'll tell you why. Because you had no way of knowing that the well-dressed man sitting right here at this lunch counter where you break bread was the same man who opened the door every time temptation knocked. You had no way of knowing that this well-dressed man picked up the phone every time desire called. I was a sinner sinner. I was a glutton's glutton. I was a luster's lusterer. And that don't matter right now. 
because everything has changed. And how has it changed? From one plate of food I had right here. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. Rose, can you come up here, please? Rose, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to a beautiful lady. This is beautiful Rose. When Rose makes a plate of food, she uses an ingredient you can't find on the spice rack. She uses an ingredient you don't find in your grocer's freezer. She uses an ingredient and it's right. That's called love. And that's what soul food is all about. She didn't look at a customer coming in and say, oh look, that's a friend of mine. That's a member of my community I know my whole life. I want to make them a special plate of food. No, she looked at Baron Ambrosia, a perfect stranger, and she did the same thing. Because when it says soul food above the door, it means there is food made to heal the soul. Quiet down, people try to eat. Demon's gone. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing a miracle happen right now. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen. amen. I'm from North Carolina. I cook some good food. Jamila's my best waitress, and my only waitress. And um, we serve everything. Pig feet, ham hock, fried chicken, barbecue chicken, barbecue ribs, turkey wing, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, candy yams. Black eyed peas, peas and rice, peach cobbler, banana pudding, um, sweet potato fat. We serve everything. The secret to good soul food is you got to want to do it. You have to want to do it. You got to love to do it because it's not an easy job. And it's something that has to really be in you. My soul food pilgrimage continued to Filet of Soul on Westchester Avenue where Cynthia and the team start off every morning cooking only with the freshest ingredients, along with all the classic sides and a mysterious house elixir known only as Triple Blend, Filet of Soul specializes in crispy fried fish and homemade hush puppies. But the question remained, did they truly understand the soul food philosophy? The secret to good soul food is a lot of love. Cooking with love. Cooking with love, that's the secret to it. Cook it with love. When it's made with love, it, it becomes addictive. And us there's no cursing in here. Absolutely. Our food is blessed. And we don't want anyone to come in and curse it. Oh, and blessed it was. For sanctified felt I when enshrouded in the gentle cloak of Cynthia's holy hush puppies. I continued with my newfound energy to speak the word of my noble discoveries to all who'd listen. But if I expect this information ever get back to Chantel, I'd have to find a larger soapbox. What you need to do is you need to send me in some of your homemade foods so I can eat it. And I can tell you how good it is and I can feel it inside of me. If you want this message to continue on the air, you need to call the number at the bottom of your screen right now. Because I need to send in your food, your homemade food, your baked goods. <laughs> Make macaroni and cheese, right? If you want me to tell you how it is, I gotta know how it tastes. Hello, caller. I see you've been doing a lot of good for the people, Reverend Barry. Yes. Well, thank you very much, miss. Never mind who I am. I just want to pledge one peach cobbler. Mm, mm, mm. Now, would you, uh, would you like to have that sent in? Or would you like Reverend Barry to come and pick that up? I made it. The least you can come and do is pick it up. You better hurry up before it gets cold. Well, uh, that's actually all the time we have for today, unfortunately. But remember, miracle can't happen, and it will happen to you. Go to your closest culinary pew. This is Ben Ambrosia, helping to break the Bronx flavor in you. I gotta go. First, I guess I just want to say that I'm sorry to everyone, because it's all my fault. I squatted and pissed away the generous budget that Bronx State gave me for this show on a fool's errand. 
and I'm gonna die out here in this wretched wilderness. And I just wanna say that he is real. He is real. Before we go any further, let's see how your gentle baron reached such a disquieting quagmire. Well, it all began simply enough with a puff piece I was putting together about the glorious Bronx Park System. One seldom realized fact is that the Bronx has the most park space of any of the five boroughs. And one of the city's grandest outdoor spaces is right here in the illustrious Van Cortlandt Park. With its 1146 acres, it is New York's fourth largest park and also contains... Suddenly I caught the aroma of something not unlike succotash. I heard a rustling in the bushes. What I saw appeared to be half man and half carrot. He quickly took off in a horrific jig-like scuttle. I knew what I had seen, and it was the discovery of the millennium. I soon uncovered that the Bronx had a rich history and lore surrounding a creature that appeared to be a carrot that walked like a man. Both Native American tribes and Dutch settlers had documented sightings. In the mid-1930s, a piece of film surfaced showing the carrot man in its environment but was widely dismissed as a hoax. Over the past 20 years, with increasing interest in cryptozoology, there have even opened up a few carrot man businesses to cater to the influx of what this coiffer is terming carrot man tourism. The most famous and delicious of all is Lloyd's Carrot Cake, located at 6807 Broadway. This small artesian bakery makes what many claim to be the best carrot cake in the history of the world. It all began when basketball great Lloyd Adams decided to put his top secret family recipe for carrot cake to good use. It was sort of like a one-man band. He would go around and sort of do sales, call on local restaurants and coffee shops and um, yeah, up for sale and he would do the delivering and then in the evening we'll come home and do the baking and get ready for the next day all while maintaining a job I might add so he did it and it, it really took I mean the product is so compelling that you know every salesperson he called on they really agreed to carry the product it is a phenomenal cake there is no cake like it I mean, it's, it's extremely moist and it's, it's, it's natural in that we don't use any artificial um, life extenders to extend the, the shelf life it's all natural ingredients that we use. And to top it off, it's a kosher product. No longer selling just carrot cake, Lloyd's has gained a strong following for their German chocolate cake, carrot nectar, and an exquisite red velvet that was in no way inspired by the red velvet monster of Pelham Bay. We are in the process of opening a, a cafe in Manhattan uh, to sort of complement this business, which is more sort of a wholesale um, operation here. Now, one more question. Um, due to your location, your product, and your mascot, I assume you're familiar with the Legend of Van Cortlandt Park. The Legend of Van Cortlandt Park? Yes. The Carrot Man, Betsy. I'm talking about the Carrot Man. The Carrot Man? Carrot Man. This is, this is, this is it. This, this, this interview is, is over. Oh, really? I knew that if I was to get to the bottom of this mystery, I would need to elicit the help of an old friend, world-class cryptozoologist Dr. Martin Barnett. And by a godly stroke of luck, Dr. Barnett, who actually lived in Oklahoma, just happened to be in New York that week, giving a lecture series at Columbia on his new book, The Carrot Man Is Not a Hoax. Before we could go on our hunt for the carrot man, I needed to make sure that my new Bronx community was safe. Much like the shark nets off the beaches of Australia, I used the remaining Bronx flavor budget to put up an anti-carrot fence to protect the innocent people of the Bronx who just wanted to use the park in peace. Within moments, we were back in the bush in the deep, dense jungle canopy surrounded by exotic flora, mysterious fauna. I took the doctor back to where I'd seen the carrot man before, and we found a fresh set of spore samples. 
He had been there recently. Hmm. A bit gaming. There you go, Baron. Get into it. Feel the carrot man on your skin. Hours later, deeper in the forest, we stumbled upon the disarrayed remains of an old Victorian garden. We may camp here. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Barnett. I'm a cryptozoologist. A lot of people believe that isn't real science, but believe you me, it's as real as day and night. Some of my more noted finds are the lobster boy of Nova Scotia. Yes, he was a wily critter. Half boy, half lobster. Who mated with which? You don't want to know. For a long time, I've been interested in the legend of Van Cortlandt Bark. You may be thinking right now, he's not as famous as the Yeti, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster. But yet, he's more dangerous than all three combined. I've been banned from Columbia. I won't go into that. We will capture the Carrot Man of Van Cortlandt Bark. Who will mate with who? You don't want to know. It was a few hours after midnight, and the doctor heard the caravan squealing in the distance. He ran off into the inky darkness. It was the sound of his effeminate scream echoed through the night. I knew I might have only moments left. Dr. Martin Barnett has been gone for over two hours. I'm pretty sure that he has been ravaged by the vicious carrot man. I've got one more piece of carrot cake and I don't know what to do. This is Baron Implosion, hoping you brought some bug flavor. <laughs> and you ah! I am the carrot man, I am the carrot man. No doctor, I am the character. que el bacalao de ella es mejor que el mío. Oh, mi querida. Yo nunca dije que es mejor. Simplemente pensé con aguacate es mejor. Pero nunca mejor. Tu bacalao es... es mi vida. Mi... mi pasión. Mi todo. Pues mira, te vas a arrepentir. Baron Ambrosia has no regrets. Ah, uh, well, maybe one. Damn! Wow, oh, look at him go! Yeah, but where's the music coming from? I think 
Cookie, it's his sneakers. That's right, kids. With B.A. Ron's all-new Bear and Blaster sneakers, the speaker is inside of the sneaker, so the freshest jams will follow you wherever you go. No way! Be the first on your block to have my new Baron Blaster sneaker, and you too can parlay preposterous. And remember, kids, just say no to all other sneakers. If you don't have the money to buy the Baron Blaster, you better get it, or you'll be a laughing stock. Baron Blaster sneakers available in the back of our treachers with special coupon and non void were permanent. Only from Coleco Streets. Uh, at least nobody remembers that. <laughs> Domino, mother! All right, enough about my personal life. Let's pack our bags and head off to Bangkok, Thailand. Thailand has one of the most complex and unabashedly ambrosial cuisines in the world. Through complex spice equations and, e and extreme cooking techniques, it is a true blend of science and creativity. When Thai food is done well, there are a few other cuisines that can compete in the art of flavor seduction. And nowhere is that better exemplified than right here in the Bronx at Siam Square Thai Restaurant, where highly trained chefs still follow the ancient ways, but also continue to push the flavor envelope to new outrageous heights. Cheers. Do we know you? You look familiar. I always said the one disadvantage of being nominated for the Nobel Prize twice is uh, so long anonymity. <laughs> no, no, I know you. Actually, I actually believe I'm the one asking the questions. Why don't we talk Siam Square? What's the secret, Joe? Siam Square is the only one Thai restaurant in the Bronx. That's number one. Really? Number two, we carefully make the food. Every single dish is tasty. Yeah, fresh fresh. ingredients, fresh food back there, yeah. all kind of seafood. Mm -hmm. We had it fresh every day. Yeah. And everyone here, you could talk to our customer, they love the food. So what are some of your special dishes? Everything you like. You like noodles? Pad Thai noodles the best. All the curries, red, green, masaman, Panang curry. Whoa, Joe. Let's break it down for those amongst us who aren't fluent in curry speak. One largely held belief is that the term curry, or gutty, came from the Tamil people of southern India and means sauce. Over the past millennia, curries have spread from India and evolved into hundreds of variations throughout the world. The curries of Thailand tend to be amongst the most fragrant due to their generous usage of fresh aromatic herbs and spices. The cumin-laden green curry gains its reputation as being the spiciest due to its promiscuous proportions of fiery green chilies. Red curry follows suit but on a slightly milder plane through the usage of the red chili peppers. But don't sleep on red because it's the color of passion. That sassy wench known as Penang uses coconut cream which propels her customary decadent richness. And finally, Masamam curry which originate amongst Thailand's Muslim communities is the sweetest, and its contents often include raisins, nuts, sweet potatoes, and sometimes even pineapple. So is there a formidable Thai community in the Bronx? It's a lot of people, a lot of Thai people in the Bronx, which is, you know, it's the same as my restaurant. They're in the hidden places. <laughs> right, and is this a special place for them to come in their own borough? Actually, you could tell. You could tell if you see that the guy look Chinese, they look Asian. If you see them, you walk past them, they look at you and they smile. You could assume them that might be Thai. And if they don't smile, they might be anyone else. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about these Wednesday nights I keep hearing about. For everyone, you could get your entree and get free wine, all you can drink. So let me get this straight. I can come in any Wednesday night, order an entree, and drink as much wine as I like for free. Sounds good to me. Next Wednesday, you're going to see this character right here, and we are going to parlay preposterous. And you too can parlay preposterous. Yes! You sneak a speaker, guys. 
No, no, that, no, that, that was some other guy, some crappy guy. I, I have no <laughs> idea. Know I don't even know who he is. No, I, what's his name? The hair. I, First on your block to have the new Baron Blaster 9000 base boot. The only boot to pump out 9000 watts of base booming power. Before you go dragging skeletons into somebody's closet, make sure those skeletons aren't packing 9,000 watts of atomic subwoofing power. Instead, come down to Siam Square where Thai food is at its most authentic and intoxicating, especially when paired with unlimited amounts of free wine. So come alone, come as a couple, or parlay preposterous with your whole crew, because this is Baron Ambrosia helping her bring out the Bronx flavor in you. Well, the more of this story. No blasters, no glory. Without them, you'll be soaring like chicken catch a torrent. Yeah.